I'm gonna give you guys a very early first impression of the new Godox R2 Nano S, S for Sony. So that's what they call the Flashpoint version, the R2 Nano S. I believe the Godox version is the X Nano or X3. They, they changed the name as far as I've heard because they used to call it the Nano, now they don't, so whatever. Either way, you guys know what I'm talking about is this tiny little guy right here. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I personally wouldn't recommend it if you already have this one right here. So if you already have the X Pro S and F whatever for whatever camera you have, if you already have this one, I don't think it's worth, I wouldn't even call it upgrading, going to this one. And I'll tell you guys why. With the original trigger that Godox released, or at least the one that I know, the X1T right here, this one was pretty good, not great. It was fairly intuitive. You would turn it on, you could turn on the modeling lamp, and then you could go through the groups and go through the channels. Not in the most intuitive way, but it was okay. But it was also nice that it gave you a shoe on top. So if you wanted to put a flash on top and then be able to fire off other flashes in the room, you could do that. Eventually this became obsolete because a lot of the flashes that were coming out were also working as transmitters. So you no longer needed this because you would put an on-camera flash on top of your camera and that would also work as a transmitter for other flashes around the room. So with that being said, this was a great one, but yeah, I, I was never fully in love with this. I thought it was just okay. Then came the X-Pro2, which is this one. I, I don't know if they called it the X-Pro2. I think they just called it the X-Pro. So this was the X-T, right? X-1T, yep. And this was the X-Pro. This is the one that I still recommend, even after the new one came out. This one is very, very intuitive. You can go through the groups very, very easily. You can change the channel very, very easily. Everything about it is just super simple and, and st extremely straightforward. For some reason, it never showed that the battery was fully charged. Even if the battery was fully charged, I don't know why, but I don't know, these things lasted for months. I probably had to change the batteries maybe once every four to six months. And I changed it because I figured it was time, never because it was letting me down. So the great little trigger. The newest one that just came out is this little guy. And I haven't taken it off, there we go. Okay, I haven't taken it off since I got it. So this is the R2 Nano. And that obviously that is because this is the flashpoint version. So every single time you turn it on, it's gonna take a couple of seconds and then it shows you flashpoint to remind you what you bought, which that right there, if you can tell I'm being a little snarky, I don't need it to give me an introduction every time it turns on, just turn on the fucking thing. Because that little second right there, we're wasting time. You saw that, it just, even that dead air didn't feel right. So that's the first gripe that I have with it. With the older one, you go boom, boom, it's on, ready to go. So I know it sounds trivial, I know it sounds silly, but if you're in the middle of trying to capture a sunset or something like that, that little second is annoying to have to wait for it to go through to tell me that I bought a Flashpoint product. I know I bought a Flashpoint product, I remember ordering it, so you don't need to remind me every goddamn time you turn it on. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I noticed that really annoyed the hell out of me this weekend, let me put it back, let me, I'm gonna put it back on the camera so you guys can see, is if I'm shooting, and I'm shooting, you know, whatever it may be, and I need to change the power, I have my hand, because I do a hand strap right here, so I keep everything here, and most of the times you wanna hold on to the camera anyway, right? So if I need to, let me power it on first, let's wait, there it is. Then I go, let's say to A and I tap it. To change it like this doesn't feel intuitive. I think if they put the dial on the left side, it would have felt a little bit more correct. Putting it on the other side seems silly because I have to either do this or I have to do this. So multiple times throughout the day, I saw myself doing this, letting, holding the camera in a very awkward position. I'm not trying to flex, guys. That's, that's just, you know, when you work out every day. So, <laughs> so it just felt very awkward doing this instead of just being able to dial it here. And yes, you can do it with the touch screen, but I'm not a huge fan of that. Like, I feel like it doesn't feel as intuitive as just being able to twist a dial, for example. Like with this one, you would have it on, and then you would press the, the group that you wanna be on, and then you just, boom, there we go. There is nothing wrong with doing a little bit of twisting. So that right there, 
doesn't really win me over. Another thing is, let's say we're in the middle of shooting with a flash, but for a second I want to take a moment and I don't want to shoot with a flash. I can hit the pause button here, so now it's paused, but it still won't let me go past my native sync speed. This thing is still, let me see if I pause B also. So if I hit pause, as you guys are seeing, you can hit pause and it'll show that both of them are off. So both A and B are off. However, it still registers that there's a, a trigger on top, so it's not gonna let you go past your native sync speed, which is annoying, because then you have to go in and shut it off, wait a couple of seconds, now it's off. Now you can shoot, and then when you want it back on, now you have to hold it. Wait. So the biggest gripe I have is just that time, the, the lagginess of going back and forth between on and off. As far as the interface, I'll give it some credit. It's a beautiful interface. It looks like an Apple Watch. And although I don't like Apple Watches, I respect the image quality. It's very, very smooth. It's very, very high quality. Like it's very, very high definition, if I'm honest. You can turn the modeling lamp on very, very easily by just tapping the modeling light on, which is which is nice. That is extremely helpful because on this one, it's very intuitive to turn on the modeling lamp on here, but it's also just one button on this one. So you hit MOD right there and it turns the modeling light on. So although you can't control how bright the modeling lamp is on this one versus the new one versus the Nano, on the Nano, you can control how bright you want the modeling lamp. I, I don't know, it just, it's not that difficult to just turn it on on here versus doing this and then adjusting how intense you want it. I mean, it's a plus. It definitely is a, anything that gives you options is a plus. I'm not gonna completely crap on that and say that that's pointless. It is nice that you're able to control the intensity of the modeling lamp. But to me, is that worth going from the X Pro to the Nano? So far, I think you guys are kind of seeing, it's a very clear no for me. And I'm gonna test it out a little bit more because I never want to be that old photographer who sticks to what they know just because that works. Like going from this one, the first one, to the second one, it made sense. This was a way better interface iteration of the original one. Is the third one just me being nearly 40 years old and been used to using the same trigger for the last seven, six years, whatever it may be? I'm not so sure. I, I'm very good at giving things chances. And I'm still gonna use it on a few more shoots to give you guys a very thorough review. But so far, if you're on the fence or if you have the X Pro and you're considering the Nano, don't be in a rush. I don't think it's really gonna be revolutionary for you. And if anything, for me, it felt like it slowed me down several times throughout the wedding. Not to the point where I was frustrated. It never felt like I couldn't figure out what to do. It just felt like extra steps to get things done that I normally know how to get done very, very efficiently. So my initial thoughts, if you've never played with off-camera lighting, I would get the Nano because then you can start the habits of this remote. If you have the X Pro already, I mean, wait until you break it, I guess, and then get the Nano. The only reason I got the Nano, if I'm being honest with you guys, is because I wanted to post a review video for you. And that's why I said I'm gonna give it a few shoots and give you guys a very thorough review, but I wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts. So far, interface, very pretty, but sometimes just like very pretty people, there's not too much else to it. <laughs> so this interface is okay. It's fairly intuitive, but is it better than the analog feel of this? I, I'm going to say no. I think that that is definitely a better remote. Obviously with size, this is nice. That's what she said. <laughs> and the options that it gives you is nice. Overall, not too impressed. I think the thing that got me the most was just the annoyance of when I was shooting and I wanted to change power and having to do this. The, the wraparound of the hand was a very stupid placement for them to do. This should have been on the left side. It should not have been on the right side. And then the startup, there's no reason to tell me every single time what brand I bought. That annoys the hell out of me. So, so far, not really impressed. Let me shoot a few more gigs with it and then I'm gonna let, give you guys a full review with all the features and all that stuff. I just wanted to give you guys my little initial review of the Nano. Let me know what you guys think. Have you picked it up yet? Have you ordered it? I know a lot of them are back ordered and a lot of people are still waiting on them. If you do have it, what's your take on it? What are your thoughts on it? Am I completely off base or 
did you guys experience the same thing where it's just annoying having to readjust things that don't, don't necessarily make it better or don't necessarily make it faster to work? So yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end and I didn't annoy you too much with my complaining about this, if you would like to subscribe, I would really appreciate it since we are growing the channel significantly this year. Thank you guys so much for watching.